what is the inverse of a function when we say a function is invertible the meaning of inverse the word is reverse whenever we talk about a function what we have seen up till now so we have a set a or a set x then we have a set y or set b that is there are multiple set two set in general and we always see that set x if you see here we are not worried about set y that much so for a function if we have this value let me write the set x again whenever the mapping is no value of function function x should should remain all the values here okay domain all the value on the set b codomain all the value of codomain that are mapped with set x range that is codomain is total total whatever numbers are possible range is range are those number which are mapped from set x that is which which have pre image and second important thing to be a function is this kind of relation is not possible that is a single value x should not give you multiple value on in y that is x comma y1 x comma y2 this shouldn't happen we cannot have multiple x here these are two things important in function any value should not remain from set x and there should not be this kind of relationship when we take the relation set y will become set x and set x will become set y the only thing you have to remember is when we are going to write this as inverse i will change the position of x and y set y will become set a or set x set x will become set b or set y i hope you got the idea and the mapping will remain the same inverse way the domain will become range the range will become domain so this is the inverse relationship i showed you okay i will just change the position and you have to change the position and do the inverse mapping okay when you do this mapping the initial function the later function that is inverse function whether it is a function or not it is not necessary see at any value of the x set or a set should not remain and there should not be this kind of mapping one to one to many okay so when we take the inverse now i am going to show you the inverse this is set x this is set y this is domain this is range now i am changing the positions here and now you see that doing inverse it may not be a function 2 4 6 it is our set y i am writing it as set x now or set a set y i am writing because it was earlier set x what is the reverse mapping which is the inverse real mapping so 2 is mapped to 2 4 is mapped to 1 6 is mapped to 3 6 is mapped to 5 okay 8 is mapped to 4 okay now what is the problem here the first was okay the the real function was okay but the inverse function was because this is inverse function this is not a function first thing anything remaining in the first set 2 4 6 set all have image in the y set it's okay second condition is there shouldn't be one to many relation that is 6 3 and 6 4 if i write you see single 6 is giving you 3 and 5 geometrically what does it mean for a single x value you cannot have multiple y values for a single x you cannot have y1 and y2 this is invalid function it may be a relation but it is not a function so if you take a function you take a inverse it is not always possible that you get a inverse so what is the way why why we need to check 
whether a function is going to give you inverse or not. If we have many to one in scenario when doing inverse, this is acceptable. No problem, many to one it is. Many x values giving single x y value, no problem. But the reverse, when you do the reverse, when you do the inverse, it will make your function invalid. Right? Understand like this. Two boyfriends can have a single can have a single girlfriend. Okay. But the function is saying a single boyfriend cannot have a multiple girl girlfriend. A single boyfriend cannot have a multiple girlfriend. This is not possible. Otherwise, he, he in his social social life as also he has to face. Though a girl, a girl can have multiple boyfriends. So many to one is many boyfriends, single girlfriend. One to one means one boyfriend, one girlfriend. This is one to one. One boyfriend, one girlfriend. Adam with Lucy and Peter with Sassy. Okay, see, this is this function has no problem. Many values are there and they are linked to one, one value. No problem with that. But when you take the inverse, it will be invalid. Okay. So, need to, all the discussion is only to explain you that inverse of every function is not possible. Only one to one function is possible. That is, the inverse will be converting the range into domain domain into range. So, you can only talk about inverse when the function is one to one. All this theory I, I explained just to tell you that the function has to be one to one. So, what do we do when we try to find out whether a, a graph or some certain expression is function or not? We will do this pencil test or vertical line test. We pass a vertical line horizontally. We pass a vertical line horizontally throughout the graph and see the number of intersections. If the intersection is only at one point, then this is a, this is a function. This is a function, no problem with that. But, but if the vertical line is passed horizontally through a, through a figure or a graph, if it is inter intersecting multiple times, more than one times, that is not a function. That is, a single x cannot have multiple y values by the definition of function. x, y1, x, y2, this possibility is bad. It is not allowed. Now, see here again, vertical line test. So, wherever it is, when we are passing it through the graph, it is only intersecting at one point. So, this is a function. This is a function. First, we have to see whether it is a function or not. Second, we have to see whether it is one-to-one -one or not in order to talk about inverse. So, this is horizontal line testing which we do in one-to-one -to, -one to find out one-to-one. -one. Vertical line test is a vertical line we pass through the function horizontally. The horizontal test, we have a horizontal line we pass through the graph vertically. A horizontal line from, from top to bottom we pass through. And when it is going to pass and if it is intersecting the graph in more than one point, that is going to be that this is not one to one, this is many to one. That is two x values have single y value. Though it is a function, it is one to one function, but this is not an ideal candidate for inverse. This is x1, x2, y, this is okay, no problem. But when you inverse it, y will have x1 and x2. That is, a single value will have multiple y values, which is, which is not possible. Two boyfriends can have a single girlfriend, but one boyfriend, when you reverse it, one boyfriend cannot have multiple boy girlfriends. So, vertical line test, first check for the function. Horizontal line to check for it being one to one. It has to be one to one. Then only inverse is possible. Inverse is, we can only talk about inverse then. This is the horizontal line. This is one to one function because we have passed the horizontal line from top to bottom. It is intersecting only at one, one point. This is a horizontal line. When we pass, 
it is going to intersect at multiple points more than one point this is not a one to one function not a good candidate for inverts this again line is intersecting at two point the horizontal line this is not a one to one function so only the first one is a candidate we have a function fx equals x cube. This is also called the cubic function. And how to find out the inverse of this function? What are the ways, steps? So we have y equals x cube. fx is y only. We are going to plot this fx equals x cube. So we will then when we plot it, then we will try to find out the inverse also. So always while plotting, we always take the value which are near to the, the uh, 0, 0 origin. So when we put x as negative 2, y will be negative 8. So 9 minus 2, if you put, you get y as negative 8. If you put minus 1, minus 1, minus 1, minus 1, multiply 3 times, you get negative 1. If you put 0, it will be 0. 1, you put 1 cube is 1 only. 2, 2 cube is 8. So this is a cubic function and these are the coordinates x and y coordinates these are the x, y, x and y coordinate and you just have to plot this this is the plotting for example the first plotting is negative two, negative 2 and uh, negative 8 x is negative 2 and 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 let me mark one more so this is approximately negative 8 so this is negative 2 negative 8 this is negative 1 negative 1 this one is 0, 0, of course. This is plus 1, plus 1. And this is 2, and this is 8. x is 2, y is 8. So this is the function when we plot x cube. Now let us come to the inverse. First we have to check whether it is 1 to 1 or not. We will do the horizontal line test. Horizontal line test is simply a horizontal line. We pass through the function vertically and if it intersect more than one point, then this is not a one to one function. If it is intersecting only at one point all the time, that means this is a one to one function. We can think, we can talk about inverse now. This is horizontal line test. Yes, this is going to have an inverse because this is one to one. So how to find an inverse? We have to undo this x cube. Undo x cube means, see again I am just trying to tell you that 1 to 1 is very important to understand. Only then we can talk about inverse. It should not, this vertical horizontal line test should not intersect more than 1. So y is x cube. Just change the position of x and y. That is what we do in inverse. Basically you have to find out the cube root of uh, y means cube root of the value so fx or y i'm changing the position of x and y that is what we do in inverse take the expression try write y x in terms of y and now change the position of x and y because range is going to be domain domain is going to be range so you, you are essentially changing the position of x and y okay now you, now you have to find out every time you have to have a function fx fx is y. So here f inverse x is, is y only, which is going to be cube root of x. This is the inverse function. Now what we do is, same way, we are going, going to put the value of x and try to find out the value of y. Put x as negative 8, negative 8, that is negative 8 to the power 1 by 3, minus 2 by 1, minus 2 by 1 by 3. Minus 8 can be written as minus 2 cube. 1 by 3 is already the power. So it will be 2 minus negative 2. Similarly, negative 1. It will be negative 1, 0, 0, 1, 1. And 8, it's 2 cube. 2 cube, cube root is 2. So these are the coordinate points now. X and Y, X and Y, X and Y, X and Y. Let us plot them. Let us plot them. So negative 8, negative 2. Negative 8, negative 2. 2. This is negative 8. And x is negative 2, this is negative 2, so this is the first point u. This is negative 8, negative 2, 2. Second is negative 1, negative 1, so this is negative 1, negative 1. Third point is 0, 0. Fourth is 1, 1. 
Fifth is A2. This is X, this is Y, this is A2. So this is the graph of F inverse. What you see here is, if you watch it very carefully, the position of X and Y, they are swapped. They are exchanged. So you see the column here, X, F, X and X, F inverse X. They have changed the positions. They all have changed their positions. So X has become Y, Y has become X. So this is a line which is passing through the origin. This line is called Y equals X and this line is essentially a mirror line. This is a reflection line. Y equals X is the mirror line. So these two functions are mirror reflection of each other. And that is the beauty of being inverse. That function and its inverse are, are mirror image or reflection of each other y to x. So what we really understood was any function and its inverse will have mirror image with respect to y equals x. That is what we are saying. Y is we are changing to x, x is x we are changing to x. The function has to be one to one in order to have inverse. And the third thing is we have learned about composition. That is putting gx inside fx, that is putting one function inside another function. So fog or gof. And we are saying f and g are inverse, that is g is essentially f inverse x. g is no, no other function, it is just f inverse. So when we take the composition, when we put one function inside the another, we should get x, fog x, f of gx or gof x, g of fx. We need to get only and only x. That is also one of the check for being inverse. How to verify that these two functions fx and gx are inverse of each other? This condition is very important. x is greater than or equal to 2. I just mentioned it just now, okay? In, in a few seconds. y is equals x square is normally a, a parabola. It's a quadratic function. It shows a parabola. So now when we when we draw this x minus 2 whole square, I have just assumed that I have, we have drawn this. We have already taken the x and y value and now we have, we have pointed it and now we have drawn this, this uh, parabola. Okay. Now we'll test for being one to one. When we do the horizontal line test, we see that this will not be one to one because it is going to intersect at two points. If I draw a line horizontally, pass through it vertically, it will intersect two points. So it, it is not one to one. We cannot talk about inverse. But the restriction is there. There is a domain restriction. X has to be either equal to two or greater than two. So all these behind two, we don't take it. So now you see with the restriction, the function becomes, let me take you to again. This is X minus two whole square. Now, this can be drawn easily. But we have a restriction. We cannot take value which is, which is uh, prior to 2. So, this is a restricted domain. Now, again, you test the 1, one to 1. Where you test 1 to 1, it is yes. This is a 1 to 1 function. This is 1 to 1 function. And when it is 1 to 1, that means it will have inverse. When it is 1 to 1, it is inverse. Now, let us try to find out the inverse. What, what are the ways to find out the inverse? Fog and Gauff should be, should be x because g is what? g is only f inverse x. So either find Gauff x or Fog x, which is which, whichever is uh, easy for you. So Fog, let us find out Fog f of gx. Composition, putting gx inside f. So in place of x, you have to put under root x plus 2. Just put it here. 2 2 gets cancelled, under root x whole square is x only. So you got x. And the thing is, these two are inverses because the comp composition is going to give you x. Let us check the inverse also. G is inverse, so f inverse, f inverse operation f we are finding out. So g of fx. Now take the value of fx, x minus 2 whole square, and put it inside gx. That is, put it inside this under root x minus 2 whole square. Put it here. So x minus 2 whole square, cancel this root uh, square and root. 
we are putting x minus 2 whole square this root and uh, this square cancel x minus 2 plus 2 2 gets cancelled you get x so g of go of x also and fog x also you are getting as x and this is the test for being inverse what are the steps of finding the inverse of a one to one function we know that a function until it is one to one we cannot talk about inverse first thing we will do that wherever this fx is replace it by y whenever you see fx equals something trade it with y and trade and swap the places of x and y then now solve for y not for x y and this y is only your f inverse x you have a inverse you want to find an inverse of 4 by 2 minus x so first step is replace fx with y y equals 4 by 2 minus x fx we have replaced by this fx was 4 by 2 minus x this fx we replaced by y 4 by 2 minus x this is the first step second step is what trade x and y places put x as y y as x now this has become x equals 4 by 2 minus y we just traded the position swap the positions now solve for y x equals 4 by 2 minus y you have to take y on the left hand side and everything on the other side right right hand side y you can solve it just as algebraic sol uh, solution or simplification is is done y equals 2 mi uh, minus 4 by x so multiply cross multiply just see that y comes on left hand side other thing comes on the right hand side so 4 minus 2x by negative x is simply 2 minus 4 by x only so either keep it like this or keep it like this but our steps says the next is y is what y is your f inverse x y is only your only your f inverse x this is your f inverse x this is 2 minus 4 by x or negative 4 minus 2x by x these are the steps of finding an inverse and when you take f fog that is f of f inverse or f inverse of f you will get x you can check you can verify this also if it is being given so let us check it we have found we know fx and we have found f inverse x so f o f inverse or f fog basically what we see a fog let us say that f inverse x is g gx so these these are different steps to find out an inverse now we have to check also that whether this inverse we found is actually the inverse or not so f inverse is what 2x minus 4 by x and fx is 4 by 2 minus x f o f inverse is f uh, the bracket f inverse x so you have to put the value of f inverse x inside fx so 4 by 2 minus x in place of x you have to put this 2x minus 4 by x whatever inverse you have found put it inside x so when you solve this i am solving it in front of you you are going to get this gets cancelled this gets cancelled and x goes x will come so the fog or gof where g is f inverse should give you x f and g if they are inverses of each other so g is essentially f inverse only so we are taking the composition of these two and when we took composition yes it is a it is a inverse first you have to check whether it is one to one or not then it's okay inverse can be found okay this is all about this discussion thank you so much take care of yourself